Uh, hello subscribers and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are joined by a very special guest. Uh, we have Andiri Casanova, one of our financial advisors from the office. Uh, she's going to be joining us today to talk about financial advice in Spain for expats, but also financial advice in the UK uh, for uh, Spanish nationals. Uh, Andiri, over to you. Um, if you'd like to uh, introduce yourself briefly, please. Yes, hi. Thank you, Dom. Um, buenos dias, everybody. Yes, yeah, so um, my name is Andere. I'm, I'm Spanish. I'm from Bilbao, uh, north of Spain. Um, but I've been living in the UK for the last 18 months. So this is when I, I joined Cameron James. Yeah, so I'm a financial advisor, um, you know, um, in the register with the FCA. Um, but I'm Spanish, so it's quite a, a singularity, I would say. Indeed. I would say Andiri herself is a singularity also. I think she joined Cameron James at the largest levels of qualifications and reg uh, qualifications um, and certificates I've seen. And she has continued to bolster those qualifications whilst at Cameron James as well. So she's probably the most qualified uh, advisor uh, that we have at Cameron James. Uh, so Andiri, just to start me off. So where were, where were you born in Spain? What's your, what's your background? Yeah, so I'm from I'm from Bilbao and I grew there. I went to university there. You know, Bilbao is, mm -hmm. is the best country, right? Mm -hmm. And and we have a very powerful university where most of the finance, you know, bankers in Spain come out, right? It's uh, Universidad de Deusto, so I studied there. But I did my last year, you know, with Erasmus in Austria. And since then I've been, you know, traveling around a lot. I mean, keeping my roots in the in the Basque country in Spain, of course. But I mean, I worked in, I mean, after Austria, I went to work in Brussels, then briefly in Barcelona, then Dubai, South Africa, and now I'm here in the UK. So yeah. I have it everywhere. And I've heard you I've heard you joking with Jonathan about a uh, competition between the food in Bilbao and the food in San Sebastian, but we'll leave that for uh, <laughs> we'll leave that for another time. Uh, okay, so um also you have some very interesting work experience, Andiri, which I must say I'm a little bit jealous of. Um tell me a bit about your work experience um at the uh, the Central Bank of Spain. That must have been pretty interesting. Yeah, well, that was a program, you know, for supervision in Spanish is called Oppositores, right? Mm -hmm. So um, basically you study, I mean, how Basel III and all the European directives on, on banking, right? And regulation and solvency of the banks. So to make sure that the banks, you know, are doing what they're supposed to do and they are healthy, they are solvent, right? So the financial system doesn't collapse. So so that, that was just uh, a lot of, you know, study and, and looking at data and financial ratios on, on the banking, but also give me a lot of insights of how, you know, banks works, not only in Spain, but also in Europe, right? Because we have a, a banking union in the in Europe, right? That it's uh, directed from Frankfurt. So, so yeah, so I know a lot about the banking system. So when clients obviously want to retire in, in Spain, right? Or even mm -hmm. or in any other way, any country in Europe, because the laws are the same for everybody, right? So I can give them a lot of, um, good advice, you know, of how much they can get uh, from the Spanish banks or the French banks, what, mm -hmm. what is the level of regulation, you know, protection and all of that. So that gave me yeah, a, a very good understanding. Um, so yeah, but I mean, apart from, from that, you know, my career, I've been in finance for over 10 years now, and I've did uh, a lot of different work, mostly, mostly on corporate, with corporate clients. Um, so, but I work like in private equity in Dubai, and I also did a strategy consulting because I have an MBA from ESADE, which is a Spanish university. So, and I was working in a strategy in Dubai too. So yeah, um, it's quite interesting because, um, so I have quite a, a mixture of ba or, yeah, background, right? Between corporate and now I'm doing retail clients, but it's advisory anyways. So, so it's good, I like it. Nice. Uh, so tell me, tell me a little bit about, um, I mean, I've worked with a few Spanish clients in my time, but not, not as many as you. So how do you find working uh, with Spanish clients? Well, uh, it's it's good because we don't have the English, right? So it's we just go straight on onto things, right? And I think the Spanish clients they they trust me more because, you know, we can connect through the language and we have the same culture. And and for me, it's great that I can give advice. And look, it's regular. It's, it's it's I'm registered with the FCA, right? So, but I can give the advice in Spanish. So it's very, yeah. It's what I was saying. It's quite it's quite unique. So, so the clients are happy because of that. But look, I'm also doing most of my clients, they're British uh, clients that are retiring in, in Spain, right? So for them, they, it's also like peace of mind because they know that they have someone who is um, 
register or regulated here in the in the UK, but has mm-hmm. all the insight. What I was talking before, right, about the banking system has all the insights on how the country works, right, and not only the banking system but also the tax system. And and we have a very unique tax system in Spain because it's not centralized. Mm-hmm. You know, it's every region has the different uh, taxes, right? So they appreciate that. You know, they appreciate that they have someone who is living in the UK and has all the because at the end of the day, the pension is a UK pension right but also has the knowledge about how the country works you know and it's it's different i mean the spanish law is very different to the uk law tax is different uh, and also the banking system Mm -hmm. so where in spain do you currently have clients now so obviously you know that uh, the british they like retiring in in the south (laughs) right so so i have many clients in in andalucia in granada um, in Murcia to Barcelona as well, Madrid, and, but, and also in the north, in, in Galicia. So yeah, it's, it's a bit, uh, yeah, so it, it's, there's clients everywhere. And, and also in Castilla-La Mancha, in Badajoz. So you see they're, they're yeah. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, and in your experience, Andrew, of dealing with clients, what is the biggest problem which Spanish residents face in transferring UK pensions? Well, I think the the best thing is what I was saying before, right? It's a UK pension. So, but people, I mean, they can they can get advice, um, you know, with yes, advisors licensed out of Europe, right? Uh, they don't need the advisor doesn't need to be registered in in the UK. So, so that I mean, even though they could give advice, I would I mean, it, it's it's always better that the advisor is registered in the UK because at the end of the day, you know, the UK law is very is very very strong. I think it's stronger than the, at the the European law, right? Um, so, so obviously they're gonna be double regulated. Basically, you're gonna have someone that has you know the ability to operate in the, in the two markets. So that's 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 peace of mind for the client, right? And especially now here as well in the UK with the consumer duty, this is something that we don't have in Europe, the Consumer Duty Act or, or regulation, right? So they're always going to be more protected and um, and better looked after if if they are double, yeah, if you have this double regulation. Yeah. I think I think it I I think it's true. And when we look at our when we look at our Spanish clients, it's like the the European license is obviously used to provide um, the financial planning advice to them. But obviously, with you being FCA regulated, the FCA license obviously just allows um, them to understand the best practice. Um, and just to add to that, here at Cameron James, so for example, whether Andir is giving advice in the UK or giving advice in Spain, the recommendation report would ultimately be the same for the underlying funds. Whilst a lot of the competition, I find certainly still when I'm giving advice, a lot of the competition in Europe is obviously providing um, different types of um, uh, investments, which wouldn't necessarily be allowed um, in the UK market. So yeah. Um, so to verb that question, um, do you think being an FCA regulated advisor is beneficial for you when dealing with clients uh, in Spain? Yes, there's definitely. Um, and going back to this consumer duty, right? Um, this is something that now we are we are required to to follow in the UK. And as you said, when I'm advising, when I'm giving financial advice, I'm not giving different different financial advice. If I'm talking to a client in the UK or in Europe, it's the same. And for me, mm-hmm. I mean, the consumer duty is putting you know clients' interest before my interest or even before Cameron. Mm-hmm. Interests, right mm-hmm. and this is something that they don't have in the in in europe yet so obviously yeah i mean it really really makes um you know makes the case stronger you know to have um a double regulated uh, advice this is something that we can is the best of the two worlds if you think about it you know if if i mean if the costs are more or less the same why would, wouldn't you go for the advisor who is has the highest level of of you know of compliance and regulation right you're always going to be much better off i think and do you have, I, I'm asking, this is, a, this is a trick question because I know the answer. Do you have any examples of clients whereby they were, say, comparing you with other financial advisors in Spain and then they ultimately decided to go ahead and work with yourself at Cameron James? And how did that come about from things like reviewing the cost and performance and stuff like that? Yeah, I have two clients that happened twice already. 
Um, and they were, I mean, so they were, they, they needed to choose between, you know, Cameron James or me and another advisor mm -hmm. in Spain, in Europe, right? Out of the European license. And, and yeah, so the first one he decided, okay, I, I want to go because, you know, he also saw the recommendation is what we were saying, you know, the level of, of work that we do at Cameron James compared to advisors, you know, that are giving advice out of you of Europe, you can really see the difference, right? And the, and the clients, they see the, the difference in the reports and the mm -hmm. recommendations. So, and this client was very funny because he told me, okay, look, you give me the recommendation already. You give me the portfolio. So I could say these guys here, you know, <laughs> that were a bit cheaper, right? In Spain, okay, just follow this recommendation. But I said, no, I mean, I'm gonna let you guys manage the portfolio because you are the ones putting the recommendation forward, right? So that makes more sense. And the other client as well, you know, I mean, with this other client, it was, it was, uh, he needed to choose, right? Between me, and another lady mm -hmm. out of Seville, out of Andalusia, and he chose me. And I think it's a combination of as well, you know, having someone, you know, because I was also helping him a lot with, with questions about HMRC in the UK, because don't, mm -hmm. for, don't forget this, right? The pension is a UK pension, although you are living in Spain and, that, and they can give you advice out of Spain, right? But the pension keeps up keeps it's a, it's a UK registered pension with the HMRC, right? So there were a lo lot of questions uh, regarding HMRC, taxes, how taxes will be applied, blah, blah, blah. And I helped him very quickly with that because I'm in the UK. So for me, I have access to this information very, very easily. Um, if you compare me with someone with an Spanish advisors, right, that they don't have that level of knowledge about how the, the system works in the UK. So again, he, he decided to, to, to go with, with, with me for because of that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And slight change of question here. Um, so for Spanish uh, nationals residing in the UK, how important do you think it is for them working with a, um, a Spanish IFA? Well, you're, you're you're a British IFA, but you're a Spanish national. So how important do you think that is for people residing in the UK now who are from Spain? Yeah, you know, the thing is that for, I mean, we as Spanish people, we are very, we follow, <laughs> like, like we are a bit like a heart, you know? So we, we are very, so we, I mean, we don't speak very well English, just to start with, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it's like a bit different, it's the same. So we stick to our language and we stick to our culture, our group of people and so on. So obviously, I mean, having someone that it understands you so quickly, right? So we don't, I mean, just the, in the language, right? So that, that's out because we speak Spanish. So that's very, very easy to connect. And then culturally as, as well, we connect, right? So we have the same background, we, we know the same things. So for them it's like, yeah, so a lot of, when you are choosing an advisor is how you connect with that person, right? How much you can trust them because you are mm -hmm. giving them the, the money. So it's a lot of, of trust and sometimes, I mean, the trust, of obviously, you know, you want returns and this is numbers, but also, you know, trust, you build them based on emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And if it is so easy, you know, to connect with someone because you share the same background and the same, and you're emotionally, co emotionally connected somehow, then for them it's very easier, easy to work with me. And then obviously they have all the security and protection that I'm, I'm, I'm with the FCA here, right? Uh, so that's, that's, it's again like combine, combining the best of the two worlds, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think it's a very valid point because for me, when dealing with UK pensions, anybody who's not on the FCA register, whilst you won't be using your FCA license when dealing with them, it's a bit like if you're dealing with UK pensions, then why aren't you on the FCA register? It is this, the mecca of UK pensions. 90% of people UK pensions are in the UK. Um, okay, very interesting, Andre. Thank you for sharing um, a lot of your experience in working uh, with Spanish clients. So my final question is, what would be your advice to Spanish residents who are only just starting their UK pension transfer research? To a Spanish residents, yeah, always, um, <clears throat> obviously you're living in Spain and, and what we said, right? So the, the advisor can operate uh, out of Spain without being registered with the FCA. But I would go for the dual, you know, license. And also, you know, when you're transferring the, your scheme, you know, your old scheme will do due diligence, right? And the moment they see that the advisor is not registered with the FCA, they will, they will flag it up. I mean, the transfer will happen, they cannot stop it, but they will raise this 
they will say this to you. You know that your advisor is not registered with the FCA. So you're going to go through all this process, maybe six months, and then you're going to find out, okay, this is not a red flag, right? But it's, there is it's something that is coming up, right? That my advisor is not registered with the FCA. And then you are going to know this only after six months, you know, after you did all this process, you're going to find out that. And then at that moment of time, maybe you're having second thoughts, right? So you're thinking, but why? Yeah, he can do the transfer, but he's not registered in the UK. So is this really 100% okay? So you're going to have a lot of thinking and second thoughts. And so, so just from the beginning, always ask your advisor, you know, are you registered in the UK? Because this is, you need to know this from the beginning, not, not find it out six months later, basically. Indeed, indeed. Well, Andiri, thank you for your uh, first appearance on the YouTube channel. It's been uh, long awaited. So thank you very much for joining today. Um, and yes, to all you Spanish uh, Spanish residents out there or Spanish nationals in the UK, feel free to get in touch below uh, via the calendar link and you can book in and speak directly with Andiri about how we can help. And as always, guys, take care of UK pension assets. And again, Andiri, uh, thank, you for, thank you for joining today. Muchas gracias a vosotros. <laughs> bye bye, bye bye.